We're live already. We are live right now. I wish you would give me like a two minute. We're going live in two minute warning. <laughs> I gave you we're going live in two second warning. So, you did. That's true. Smitty just said he uh, must not have got the memo on the dressing up part. Oh, he dressed up. Look at you. Where are you know, going? He, he totally reminds me of my great grandma and how she would bundle up in a quilt <laughs> every night. Hey, well, I've been snowed in for a week, so that's that's what's been going on here. Literally, we've been snowed in for a solid week as that's of today. Crazy. I'm guessing that's a I'm moo, moo under there too, right? What now? I'm guessing that's a moo moo under the blanket with like. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I've got pink house shoes on too. You know, you know how we roll in Mississippi, but uh, no, we have been literally snowed in. There's uh, we're not even having school tomorrow, so it's the roads are still dangerous. Some parts of it. Well, that's too bad. This is this, by the way, black and white is the fifties. Uh, my fifties homage to the vision. Ah, oh, is that why you're dressed up? Yeah, I'm going. I got to go to work. <laughs> oh. oh, look at that! Doesn't fit Fancy, on my microphone. yeah. Let's, uh, y'all ready for Larry to take us in? Yeah, let's, let's go. Let's do it. Everybody listening on Facebook and around the world, here's Larry. All things Hosted by Mounts. Let's face it, we were always ready to roll without him anyway. <laughs> CJ Darren. Ain't nobody perfect, right? And Smitty. I've never planned out hardly anything. I just called. Beach. Cajun man. Uh, I'm just old nobody. Somebody looking for somebody. Wow, that was super choppy. Was it just for me? No, uh, it, was it was very choppy, choppy on my end, too. Yeah. Larry, what are you doing to us? <laughs> well, bring us in, CJ. We know that I can fix Larry in post production. Okay, well, happy to hear that. Welcome, everybody, all of our unexplained friends out there. Thanks for tuning in. Those that are live looking at us, sorry. Those that are not live and listening to us on the podcast podcast. So we hope everybody is doing well. We have Smitty with us today, even though he's snowed in in Mississippi. Who would have thought we would say that phrase? But know, he is here real. joining us. So welcome back, Smitty. Thank you. Thank you. My beard's in good form today, so i put it on display. It is in good so. form. Yeah. No, I'm about tired of actually being snowed in. It's, it's unusual to be in this long. But uh, I'm about ready to go back to work. But we are not I going bet. to What have you tomorrow. done to uh, keep yourself entertained? Uh, we watched WandaVision a lot. I've watched a couple <laughs> episodes over again and watched a lot of television and, and stuff. Cleaned a little bit. Played in the snow. It was Emma Kay's Gotcha Day last week, so we celebrated that. We went out and played in the snow and got pulled around by the lawn for I saw that picture. That's so fun. That was a creative way to go sledding in Mississippi. Yep. It was yeah, pure ice that. those first few days. It's and Tim, Redneck you're looking dapper in your 1950s attire. Well, thanks. So today, tonight is my homage to 50s vision. I have to say, I got quite the surprise tonight when we logged into the show. Because for those of listeners that remember a couple of episodes ago we at all things unexplained actually recast the smitty <laughs> <We did. laughs> but, but yet this universe is smitty is back I, I have no idea how this happened yeah this this smitty's the best smitty so you know <laughs> the one and only that's exactly right Good job, Smitty. 
So, CJ, you want to tell everybody what they've got to look forward to tonight? Yes. So we are about to dive into episode seven of WandaVision. So if you haven't watched yet, there will be some spoilers. Now would be the time to pause our podcast, go watch WandaVision, and then come back and listen to the rest of our podcast. But we will be recapping WandaVision episode seven. Anybody that's joining us live, send us your comments, your theories. You can even jump in live with us, and Tim will tell you how to do that. Yep, let me post the link. Anybody that wants to join us, you'll get to go to our All Things Unexplained green room until it's time for you to come in. Make sure to, if you're listening on the podcast, hit that subscribe button. Check us out at allthings-unexplained.com. There's our link to join us. By the way, CJ Smitty, did y'all know we have a special guest possibly joining us later? No. No. I, I don't all kinds know of anything. surprises our way. <laughs> it's me, no, so, I just man. roll in and, and do whatever the show needs doing. So, Well, we may actually have the Vision himself join us. We have a listener chiming in. Hello from George Winters. In the great state of North Carolina says, What's oh, up, George? Watch... Yeah, he says, I better go watch previous WandaVisions. Have a great podcast. Hey, George. Yeah, I don't if know you haven't George watched is. yet, you need to go. So I'm going to tell him, thanks, George. Feel free to join us. We don't want to spoil, spoil anything for you. All right, so we have basically have 20 topics tonight. We're going to do a roundtable discussion of... All episode seven. CJ, you got those topics in front of you? Definitely not. So why don't you go ahead and <laughs> pull those up? All right. Well, if you hear this, <laughs> little fairy magic dust means it's time to go on to the next topic. That topic just happens to be topic one from episode seven. Smitty, you ready to do this? I'm ready. I was born ready. All right. Let's do this. So, and by the way, Hopefully the vision can, like I said, drop in on us later. So, and CJ, you all caught up on WandaVision? I'm all caught up on WandaVision, and I'm guessing you sent me these topics somewhere, so I'm going to see what I can do about finding those. Yep, they're on Facebook Messenger. I sent them to you. You put okay. them in an updated version. Although, <laughs> as, Smith, as the old universe, Smitty and I were recapping, I added a few more updates. But anyway, Episode 7 of WandaVision open. Modern family style, complete with the characters. <coughs> complete with the characters. <laughs> Addressing the audience in interview snippets like a documentary confessional. And that's we see all. What's that, Smitty? I said that's true. Of course, that's also uh, that's also a key part of the office which is my favorite show besides Yeah, Wonder it was Vision, definitely an office opening. Yeah, I appreciate the office too, but they said it was like Modern Family. I never really watched Modern Family. I was more of a Al Bundy guy, so not a Modern Family man, but whatever. Including Wanda telling us, hey, look, we've all been there, right? Letting our fear and anger get the best of us, etc. And they had a quick flashback to... Uh, the sword agents trying to escape her expansion of the hexadome with some goofy bongo music playing and the sword soldiers running away in terror. And by the way, did anybody happen to notice the bed sheets? Yes, I noticed that one of them was Paisley, wasn't it? Not maybe. that was all. I definitely did not notice anything paisley, but maybe. I don't even know what paisley is. Is that a color? <laughs> no, it's it's the little amoebas on the sheets. I noticed that they look like they were from different time periods. Did you call them amoebas? <laughs> yes, they are. They look like amoebas. CJ, what would you call them? <laughs> paisley described as amoebas. <laughs> That's new. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're amoebas. So the bed sheets were actually covered in hexagons. Oh, uh, what? Now, was that something yes. that you noticed? I was talking. 
Well, I mean, I definitely noticed after I read it online that they were covered in hexagons and went back and watched <laughs> it and noticed that they were covered in hexagons. Absolutely. I was talking about gotcha. the pillow, I guess. The pillow had some paisley on it or, pa- you know, and and I thought, like, everything did match. Like, uh, one pillow was one way, one was another. The sheets were one way. The bedspread was another, so it did match. Interesting. Smitty also is a part-time interior decorator, so he's solid. <laughs> that kind of stuff. That's for sure. That is not true. <laughs> that means on to topic two. So, topic two, and next up in episode seven, Tommy and Billy run into the bedroom, say, oh, Mom, our games are freaking out. And then they, they flash back to the kids playing video games, and we can see the controllers are flipping between Uno cards and I personally love the Atari joystick. Smitty, did you notice the old one-handled Atari thing there? Yes, the Atari. They also had GameCube, uh, Atari, Uno. In my video game, uh, Informer, what else did they have? They had a Wii controller on there also. Oh, nice. All I really noticed was the uh, old Atari and then the Uno cards. That's about all I knew. Oh, yeah. And Billy, at some point, comments, my head feels weird. It's, like, really noisy, and it was framed within a comedy, right? But that, I don't know about y'all, but I kind of got a little ominous, creepy feeling from that. Well, yeah, I, I don't think I, that any kids in a comedy would say that their head was noisy. Yeah, but I also thought it was like uh, saying that he can hear other all these other people's thoughts and stuff. And that he hasn't been able to control that yet. So he's getting all this background noise in his head. That's what I thought. And, you know, I'm usually right. Yeah, it was definitely (laughs) ominous. And the previous episode revealed that Billy has his mom's powers or some of them. And so a little bit of foreshadowing there, given what we know about later on in the episode. We won't touch on that right now. Wanda throws the covers off. And a little bit of comedic hijinks here. And a little bit of foreshadowing here, too, I think. She's dressed as the Scarlet Witch. Yes. Which, I I don't know, though, you think that she did that. Was that after the the incident where they were at the Halloween thing? Was Was that night of and she woke up in that costume? It's definitely a way I, I thought it was it. the same you? costume she had on, was it not? Well, that's what I was saying. I, I I thought it was too, but I just I was I was just checking with y'all if you saw whether that was the the next morning after Halloween or not. If no, that's I how you I took, took it. it, I think we've all had rough Halloween nights of our in our past. <laughs> I think no. this was how they meant it, and she woke up a little hung over from a little bit too much magic. Keep in mind, she probably kind of overexerted herself, expanding the hexadome by, I think they said, seven miles at some point in the episode. So, yeah, she probably was a little hung over from that. <laughs> Next up, we find Wanda mm-hmm. downstairs eating a bowl of sugar snaps. By the way, did that make y'all think of anything? Uh, no, not really. I was wondering where sugar snaps originated, but I could tell you what snap makes most people in Marvel think of. Oh yeah, okay, I got you. No, yeah. I was thinking like snap, crack, crackle, pop. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was wondering where those that cereal came from personally, but you know, well, if you. It, Go ahead, I've actually got it pulled up on, on the TV right now. It's on pause. And on the back of the box, it might be a certain pattern of, like, maybe, I don't know. It's hard to tell what it is, but it looks like a little maze and stuff on the back of the box. I can't see all of the box, though, just part of it. Well, I think if by snap, crackle, pop, we mean half the universe was snapped out of existence and cj is exactly accurate that's what i meant yeah 
She pours up a little almond milk, another sign that things are going haywire, because who drinks almond milk in their cereal? I mean, really? No one, uh, not my, even people with lactose problems. I know. I just, <laughs> my wife does, because Don't if she me. drinks real milk, she dies. Oh, wow. So. <laughs> okay, For real. Get her on here. The almond milk just warps into whole milk, though, in a carton, by the way. Another bit of foreshadowing here because missing kid. Just missing like person, the yeah. yeah. The milk yeah. carton. I did notice yep. that. I'm looking at it right now on the TV. I've got it paused, and I can't tell who it is, but well, uh, it's very I hard to see. I can tell you see. who it's bad news for. Billy and Tommy. Her, yeah, Billy and Tommy, they, they are gone, or Apparently. So. After that, back to Sword Headquarters. Farther, way further out from the expanded hexadome. They don't want to get sucked up into there. Director Hayward is talking to some underling of his. Says that the TV signal is gone. And he wants to launch some mysterious plan ASAP. What do y'all think Hayward's got in mind? Oh, I think he's going to take out Wanda, which was his goal in the last episode or two episodes ago. Yeah, I think he wanted to uh, to take her out. I mean, obviously, he is a power-hungry, power-mad human being. If he can't get it by uh, finesse, he's going to use as much force as possible. But I yeah. think he might get himself killed. That's true, and I tell you what, after what we see later on when somebody tries to ram a vehicle into the hexadome, he might he might uh, have a hard time getting in there. We'll see. After that, episode 7, Vision wakes up at the circus. To me, this was kind of the actual, actually the most comedic parts of the whole episode. Vision <laughs> at the circus with the strong man chasing him and Darcy, so he meets you know, Darcy's there. She just rips herself out of the fake handcuffs. And some people think the strong man is kind of a throwback to Superman, who himself was patterned after a strong man in the circus. So we got a lot of stuff going on here. Darcy says some funny things. She's an escape artist now. And she doesn't remember anything. There we go. Funny stuff at the circus. Yeah, I yeah also got their on interactions were the best. Yeah. I got online and started looking up different people who might have started out at, in the circus. So, of course, I already knew Robin had, but I was wondering if there were any big Marvel characters. And I didn't see any like that really stood out that were pretty apparent to the Marvel universe that started out in the circus. But I was curious about that. Yeah, I think it was just a clever homage to the first superhero of them all, Superman. Here you go. Little nice I think right. it was just a person in a circus. I think you guys are overthinking that one. <laughs> I think it was just the people that you would find in a circus. I mean, also I don't know. Possible. I also think maybe it was saying that maybe uh, that sword were clowns, but you know, the circus folk. They're oh, just like bumbling, it. bumbling around, not knowing what they're doing. And and Wanda's a lot smarter than they are. A little Wanda dark magic sarcasm. I like that. That's the first time. Or whoever's that. controlling that's, Wanda. That's right. That's that's a good uh, theory there, Smitty. So boom, we go back to Westview now, and Wanda asks Tommy and Billy if they've seen their dad. Of course, they have not. They do ask about Uncle Pietro, and this kind of surprised me here. Wanda says, "Boys, that's." Not your real uncle. She tells the boys they want her to have answers to everything, and she's just starting to think everything is meaningless. I don't know about y'all, but I didn't know what to make out of Wanda saying that that's not the real Pietro. Well, I wasn't surprised because in the previous episode, she was definitely questioning who he was and whether or not it was actually her brother. But as far as an explanation to who it is or why they're there, I'm lost. I have no idea. None. Yeah, I, I thought that he would be gone, but now he popped back up at the last. So uh, I thought maybe she banished him, 
but he was there with Rambo at the very last. So I don't know what's so going on. So let me ask that you guys about that. I have fast forwarded through the end credits. I've never watched any of them. <laughs> They're in like the episode that I've missed. That's part of it. Yeah, there's a little part there that you missed when Rambo with, goes to with open every episode? Agatha's door. No, I uh, saw that one. And so I thought, oh, oh gosh, have I missed like tidbits in the last six? No, we'll, what we'll get you... into that. That was definitely the clever uh, one of the clever aspects of it. So that's actually our top, final topic, topic 20. Okay. But you haven't missed anything. <whistles> After that... Juana's sitting on her couch in sweats and slippers, very (laughs) Smitty-esque. That's what I'm talking about. I knew I liked this show for a reason. A son on either side of her, and Wanda hears the door open, and she kind of opens it herself because she just doesn't feel like getting up. And surprise, it's Agnes, and she's there eating a bowl of sugar snaps, you know, and making jokes about taking a mental health day. And she tells Agnes, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. And Agnes is like, hon, I think you could just use a wand today. Let me take the kids off your hands. And Wanda's like, oh, geez, would you? That would be awesome. I didn't know yeah, what she said about something. Agnes taking off the, with the kids. What did y'all think? Well, it's just weird that Agnes shows up every time Wanda needs something. Like, literally, she's there immediately she needed the rabbit she was there she needed the pots earlier she was there the food that was what the first or second episode so she's immediately there anytime wanda needs something it's kind of the way i wish our our friendship was tim but you're never there (laughs) you you know geez i was about to cue the golden girl song Tim's well, Tim's very much the uh, all right. Well, good luck, good luck with that. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> I did. Golden Girls is your second favorite show, right? Travel but, down the road and back again. You even know the oh, theme boy. song. Hey, that is still Getty. I mean, she was a great actress in her prime. Yeah, Betty White. Did Betty White pass away, or is she still alive? No, she's still alive. Is she? I thought and she died. As awesome as ever. Yeah. Her day? She's, she, oh. She may show up as Wonder Woman or something. <laughs> I mean, if she passed away the other day, then I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that either. But I still think she could show up in Westview. So all of a sudden, we're back to Jimmy and Monica in a sword vehicle. And this, this entire scene kind of threw me for a loop, too. Doling out, you know, exposition about all kinds of stuff. And Jimmy reads Darcy's hacked information about Project Cataract. I, I didn't really know what to make out of that. And, and about Hayward trying to revive the vision, although we talked a little bit about that in our last episode. And use him as a sentient weapon. Pretty creepy stuff there. Of course, only to have Wanda apparently steal the cyber corpse. They arrive at what looks to be a secret meetup. And this is what I don't understand. You know, we we had a lot of build-up toward, uh uh-oh, oh Oh my, she's going to meet the aerospace engineer. Right. Was he there? Was this the aerospace engineer? That's. I was wondering that, too. The whole episode, I thought, okay, is this woman that she met, is this the the aerospace engineer that everybody was hoping would be, what were your guys' guesses? I don't even remember. Four? Thor? Reed Richards. (laughs) Reed Richards, yes. Who I don't yeah, know. Who I that said is, but... Thor. Jokingly, I said Thor, but <laughs> but it would be more along the line of Reed Richards. So yeah, you're right, Mister Fantastic, right? Right, Mister. So Fantastic. is she the aerospace engineer? I say no, and, and here's why I say, I say no. no. Right. If you listen carefully to what she says, she says, "We got your truck ready." Which, by the way, they did this apparently in like 24 hours, I guess. I mean, you talk about getting a, you know, we, we're going to build electric vehicles by what, 2036 for everybody? And we're going <laughs> to send a, a citizen to 
orbit apparently at some point and maybe go to the moon again by 2075. They got this advanced tech ready the next morning now. But Okay, I'm sorry. These people can fly and shoot things out of their hands at each other. And the thing that you're questioning is that a vehicle was ready in time. <laughs> Nothing else. Nothing else is questionable to you. But just okay, that's that. That's a good point. But I will- <laughs> well, sort of, sort of. But like you have to understand, everybody else exists within the real world except for the Marvel characters. Kind of, you know what I mean? Like even Tony Stark, who's Iron Man, had to create all his technology in order to become Iron Man. So yeah, I think right. it's kind of weird that they had that vehicle too. It looked yeah. like something, you know, Neil Armstrong would be running. But they didn't it say we built this vehicle for you. They just said they got it ready. So they might have already had the vehicle and had to make a few changes for it. And when well, she said true. we, I understood that to be her and the people that were around her, not her and one other person. Oh, so I thought they you? said we built this city on rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. But that would have been great. We might have to edit that out. <laughs> no, I don't. Think so. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, it was, it was great. So, CJ, do you think it was the aerospace engineer? Yeah, I do. Wow, what a letdown then. I think that this is episode seven. There's only, what, nine episodes? That's like, right. how much more, how much more can happen in the next two episodes? Can we introduce the aerospace engineer and can we find the missing person and can we figure out what happened to Vision and can we figure out what director Hayward is doing? I feel like in each episode we've only figured out one small thing. That's a lot to pack in to the next two episodes. You're right. I don't think we're figuring everything out this episode. I'm not even sure we're going to know exactly who the big bad is this episode. But this season, you mean? Aeros- right, this season. But I don't think that was the aerospace engineer. I don't note. know. I I think that they are purposely bringing in smaller actors to play big parts. A word. I can't remember what I said. He might be. <laughs> but you said no way. That guy's not a big enough actor to play that role. I don't know. I think they're intentionally bringing in smaller actors to play these parts. It definitely could be. I I do think that Marvel is going to for sure put their own twist on some of these incoming X-Men and Fantastic Four characters. We just have to see what happens. So, next thing we know, we zip back to the circus where Darcy and Vision make a hectic escape in the funnel cake truck. <laughs> Classic comedy here. I mean, how good did yeah, that truck I, smell? Let's be honest. I really got to wondering about that, too. They were talking about Wanda being the one that was mm, keeping them from getting case. back. Was it Wanda or was it Agnes? That's the big. That's the big question on my mind. I feel like it was Agnes or whoever else is in charge because Wanda's losing her grip on reality. I don't think she's sitting there controlling stoplights and having crossing guards come by. I think that Agnes wanted them to not get there so that she can have the interaction with her that she had. Maybe, but it also could be uh, Wanda because what if she – didn't want Vision to come back so she doesn't have to face the fact that he's actually really dead. You know, I mean, I'm sure a lot of women have not wanted to see Tim coming, but what about Wanda? <laughs> Did she want to see Vision Vision coming uh, to see to the house? So I've seen yeah. many run away from him. I'll put it that way. So. Well, you know, this is speaking, knowing what we know now, right? Af- after we've watched the entire episode. True. Yeah. Neither of y'all thought it was Agnes when this was happening, right? Didn't both of you think Wanda is keeping him away? Yeah, definitely. I thought Wanda was keeping him away, you know, at that at that point in time, up until the whole episode was revealed. And I thought, wow, that might not have been her at all. Right. So I will say I would not have thought that it was Wanda, except that Vision said, I think Wanda's trying to keep me away. My first thought was not, oh, Wanda's making all of this happen. 
until he said that. Yeah. Of course, he did fall for Agnes's little act at the stop sign, too. So, you know. Or did he? We'll see. I fell for it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I still have some questions about all that. I'm I'm not going to lie. But up next, we have one of my favorite parts of the episode. And also one of the most controversial parts. Also one of the most potentially largest scale impactful parts of the episode in terms of the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe itself. And that is the commercial. It's commercial time for Nexus Pills. Would y'all like to hear that commercial again? Sure. Yes. Let's see if I can cue it up. Okay, it's definitely not going to let me play that for some reason, but (laughs) (laughs) essentially the theme of the whole commercial was, here's these pills, Nexus pills, because the world doesn't revolve around you, or does it? So the theme, (laughs) yeah, so essentially Uh Wanda needs these pills, or whoever needs these pills, to ground them to their own reality. Ooh, I've got so many things to say right now, but I'll just be quiet. (laughs) (laughs) And they're mostly about Tim, about (laughs) grounding him to his own reality. Hey, I'm on no drugs, son. Thank you. I didn't say you wouldn't, but I was thinking you might could use a Nexus pill or Nexus pill, but, uh, (laughs) you know. But I do. Didn't think it say that, that the side effects were more depression? Yeah, yeah it yeah. said it could lead <laughs> to more depression. Yes, it could lead to more depression. I thought that was funny. So, just based but, on how those ads usually go, that was hysterical. Well, yeah. the thing is, this commercial could have more implications for the Marvel Cinematic Universe moving forward than anything else we've seen. So, why? Why thought, do you think that? Well. Two reasons. One is the most probable. Two, possible. Number one, the most probable reason in the comics, and and we need to discuss this before we get to the end of the episode, in the comics, they have what is known as the nexus of all realities. This is where all realities meet at in one particular point in the universe. Now, don't ask me why. But this place just happens to be in the Florida Everglades, in the swamp. Okay, this brings up a lot of other issues, but I feel like clearly they're talking about the nexus of all realities. We're dealing with multiple realities here. We're dealing with someone who is losing a grip on her reality. That's the entire theme of this episode in particular in the comics. The nexus of all realities is protected by a creature called Man-Thing, which is kind of Marvel's version of Swamp Thing. We'll bring this up later. We'll revisit this later. But when you think of Swamp, you kind of think of vines, right? Vines run everywhere, for one thing. Also in the comics, there was another character who protected the nexus of all realities named Jennifer Kale, who just so happened to be a blonde magic user. Kind of makes me think of another blonde character in this show who we have not quite identified yet, by the way, named Dottie. There's even a dude named Dockham the Enchanter, a powerful wizard. Now, to me, that's the most probable thing going on here. We'll revisit this toward the end. But also in the comics, there's another thing called Nexus Beings. These are beings that have the capability of changing the fabric of time and reality based on what they do. Guess who just happens to be one of those Nexus beings in the comics? The Scarlet Witch. 
That's what I was going to say. I thought Wanda was, yes. I'm so lost. (laughs) I just have no idea what's happening. It's it's deep, that's for sure, but I think it's definitely important moving forward. I think we're definitely looking at the nexus of all realities. Are we looking at Wanda being a nexus being? I'm not sure if they're going to call her that, but it kind of seems like she is, and I do believe that that could be going on as well. That's probably true. I'm assuming. It's I'm going to need I, I, like I a PowerPoint say... presentation on that <laughs> later, if you well, don't mind. Okay. Because that chime means we're actually going to circle back to the nexus of all realities. Let's just remember it's in the Florida Everglades, okay, in the swamp. We'll, we'll revisit that. All right, next up. What's there? <laughs> The nexus of all realities just happens to be in the Florida Everglades in the swamp. Is Troy mm-hmm. Landry there going, shoot him, Elizabeth, shoot him? <laughs> <laughs> I actually have no idea See, who that is, but I'm still laughing. From swamp <laughs> people. It's, it's from swamp people. But they're actually from Louisiana. They're from Louisiana, oh. but he's a swamp person. I just oh, figured God. that our like unspoken rule on this show is we're supposed to laugh at each other's <laughs> jokes. So I went ahead and giggled, but no idea. Well, most laugh. most of mine are pretty funny. <laughs> but anyway, <we're> <laughs> okay, Next up, we've got Agnes sitting with Tommy and Billy at her suspiciously ornate and wood paneled home. Where Billy is petting Senior Scratchy, the bunny. He notices that the bunny is mighty quiet in the head, and Agnes is pretty quiet on the inside herself. And Tommy asks if her ma, if their mom is okay. Agnes says, "Sure, she's super mom," you know. And then looks into the camera, and she's like, "You try telling a ten-year-old that his mother's cuckoo for cocoa puffs." Yikes. Yeah. So, yeah. Here's Which Agnes with the I twins. indicated. Huh. Yeah, but when he said he couldn't hear her, I knew something was up when he said he couldn't hear, you know, her thoughts because he, he was picking up on everybody else's. So that's kind of a, that was kind of a, a, a foreshadowing of, of the rest of the episode, I guess you could say. Oh, for sure. So I knew something was up too, but... Here's what I question. Whose thoughts is he hearing? Because everybody else seems to be controlled by Wanda or whomever. And those that are on the outside of the city are not even moving. They're just standing still. So how many thoughts could these people actually be having? I don't know, but he heard vision for sure. Because in the last episode, he talked about hearing his daddy. Right. But that was when his dad was on the outside of the hex. He was. No. Yeah, I guess he was on the outside. I think it it could be a combination, right? He could be hearing the thoughts inside other people's head in the hexadome. He could be hearing at this point, because he seems like he might be getting more powerful... He could be picking up on thoughts of people outside the hexadome. And it kind of makes you think back to the comics of, we've mentioned this guy before, Charles Xavier, Professor X, one of the world's most powerful telepaths, right? And at some point in his life, right, he just thought he was going crazy as a child hearing all these voices in his head. That's true. He thought he was going nuts, about like you did when you couldn't see the leaves on the trees when you had glasses. Didn't have glasses. Sorry, you got the glockenspiel, <laughs> Smitty, so... Okay. <laughs> that, was, up, that was a weird... It was back to Monica. <laughs> She's getting... That's called a glockenspiel. <laughs> Look, listen. That's a glockenspiel. I, I thought you sprick be Dutch a little bit. No, I do not speak Dutch. Thank you. Well, we zip from Agnes and the twins' disturbing conversation to Monica getting all dicked up in a spacesuit. Jimmy tells her Godspeed, which is very Star Trek-like, by the way. She gets in her sword vehicle, 
tries to ram it, right? Looks like she's going to make it through in the super tech. But, uh, of course, it gets turned into a truck, spit back out. She barely escapes. Seemingly with her life, she says, screw it, I'm going through anyway. She starts going through. Suddenly, we got a lot of 2001 Space Odyssey stuff, one of the show's favorite topics of the past. She's hearing all these voices in her head, all the voices from Captain Marvel, which I need to rewatch sometime. She comes back through the... And her mother. Her side, and her mother, right, her mother. Her mother, which I'm telling you, is going to play a part in this show. CJ's got some theories okay. about the mother. I kind of think the mother is just she gone, but CJ's got. Some <laughs> <laughs> well, My you know, theory Marvel. is that one Wanda wanted Rambo back in there for some reason, even though she was mad. Because why did Rambo get to get back in there and retain her identity? when no one else did. I think it's because she had already developed some powers from entering and exiting the hexagon. It's possible. But her eyes were blue. Is that really Rambo? I don't know. I'm assuming it is. Well, I think it is. And in the comic books, and we all saw this con coming, Monica Rambo was a superhero who ironically was called Captain Marvel for a while. She also went by a lot of other names, including Photon. So she clearly is on the superhero path now. She's got these superpowers. Her powers in the comics are basically she can transform to any particular energy on the cosmic spectrum. And I think we kind of see that going on here. We already know the hexadome is made out of cosmic background radiation. And so therefore, if we're getting, being comic accurate here, Monica is probably able to basically pass right through these energy fields now with no harm. And now she's ready to rumble. She's in the hexadome. Yeah. You, and you also notice her eyes too. Oh yeah. Her eyes turn. Oh yes. Yeah. Her eyes are very prominent, but I think I might change my middle name to Rambo just because <laughs> it's the greatest name ever. Well, every Might kid be. in Mississippi, when we saw the movie Rambo, we were running around like painting our faces with mud, hiding and stuff, yes. and jumping out, trying to kill each other. But anyhow, <laughs> not much has changed. Always no, it has not. Rambo before Rambo was cool. Yeah. Moving on, back to the funnel cake truck and more comedy, because. All of a sudden, they're hitting every red light. You know, this is kind of just everyday life here. The, You know, nothing's funnier than real life, I guess, kind of thing. Vision is not amused. Darcy's like, man, what can you do? We're hitting all the red lights. And we're out here in the sticks, but we got to stop. We don't want to get pulled over by the Westview police. And next thing you know, Vision's being interviewed off camera. He has no idea what's going on. He used to be a artificial intelligence-based robot. He, he was also patterned after a, or created by a genocidal robot named, what was the name of the robot that made him? Ultron. That has Ultron. Him robot. He's, yes. Is he any of those things still? Is he none of those things? He just doesn't know what's going on. But Darcy says, hey, one thing you got going for you is your love for Wanda. It's real. It's real, baby. Yeah, if he's really alive, if he's really real, it is. I got, I got, I got thinking though. Why in the world, like, he sat there for that long time, and it took him so long. Even though he's the smartest, supposed to be one of the smartest beings or whatever to ever exist on the earth, and he sat there for all those red lights. He eventually said, "What in the world am I doing sitting here when I can just fly?" <laughs> you know, that kind of gave an insight into: is this the real vision, or is it some some manifestation that Wanda just made up and he doesn't really possess all the powers, only the ones that she gives him. Can we talk about how one of the curses I gave last week was that you would hit every single red light <laughs> for the rest of your yeah. life? <laughs> Nailed it. That that's kind of that was like an Easter egg except I said it time. Foreshadowing. CJ may have a little magic in her too. So for me, <laughs> when I reframe this whole series of events based on what we know now, 
I think that somebody clearly doesn't want Vision and Wanda together. I think Vision is probably not as affected by magic as humans are. I think that's safe to say. And therefore not as controllable, obviously, as the humans are in the town. And therefore somebody would be just happy if he left the Hexadome and just disintegrated. Of course, knowing what we know now, we kind of have an idea who that is. And it ain't Wanda. But that person would have also had to have allowed him into the Hexagon originally. Or would they? Or did Wanda leave, steal his body, and come back with him? Or is that even a in. real body? <laughs> or is this just some <laughs> creation? I'm not even sure that's his real body. but Or it could have been that Agnes didn't realize how coherent he was becoming until their meeting on Halloween night. That's right. And if you look back over the previous episodes, we had kind of a lot of people checking in on Vision and Wanda, didn't we? And in knowing what we know now, it kind of feels like they were doing just that gauging kind of how far Vision was progressing and exactly what was happening with Wanda. Especially when the guy was cutting the, the hedges and they were really, he was saying, trying to figure out, Vision was trying to figure out. And they were kind of like, we're here for you. And then he was like, what? And basically... Agnes shut the guy up. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? I'm glad you brought up Herb because I actually posited a revolutionary theory on Reddit right before we came on air. It's been met with almost universal disdain. <laughs> <laughs> By so the way, another... this is just not just a Reddit thing. Most of his ideas were met with disdain <laughs> while we were teaching together, too. I mean, so, luckily yeah. we already have enough hate for another mean Reddit episode. But let's circle back to Herb. Just remember, a revolutionary new Herb theory that I came up with hasn't been heard anywhere else on Earth that I can figure. You're going to love it. Trust me, you're going to love it. So let's move back into Westview where we have the ultimate superhero showdown of the series so far. Wanda versus Monica. So sure enough, Monica is like, hey, Wanda, let's, why don't you snap out of it? Hey, we're just trying to make you out to be the villain. Let's not, that, let's, let's not let that happen. Wanda's like, I hate you. Get back out of here. Boom. Try to kick her back out of town. Whoopsie. Monica stuck the three-point official superhero landing, signifying she is Photon or Captain Marvel 2 or somebody now. It's like, nope, you ain't kicking me out. And then, of course, guess who comes back? Agnes is back and ushers Wanda away. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I have to say, being a non-Marvel fan, that may not be the right way to say it, but I've never really watched any of those movies. One of the reasons I have not liked them in the past is there's just been so much CGI and so many like how many times can Superman go through a building and what have you I was very appreciative that it didn't turn into a giant let's throw lasers from our hands at each other fight scene that they stuck with more of the character development and more of the psychological aspect than fireballs no that's true but unfortunately for you and you're right, I, I, I really love the way they've taken it so far. I do think either this next episode or the finale, we're definitely going to get that classic Marvel right. summer blockbuster. And I know that everybody else watching wants that. <laughs> but just from, just from my own standpoint, I was happy that it didn't go there yet. So I need to ask you two something about this entire scene. So when Agnes looks out her window and notices Wanda in an argument with Monica, Agnes goes out there to take Wanda back to her house. Uh, all of a sudden we cut to 
the mailman, the mailman's there again. What do y'all think about this mailman always showing up? I can't I say that I've noticed the mailman mail being plan? there that often. Well, is he the mailman or was he more like a UPS guy? I mean, I don't guess it really matters, but I thought he was more like a package delivery guy than the United States Postal Service. No, he's definitely the mailman. If you go back and and from episode one, at a lot of these key Agnes moments. Oh yeah, I remember that. The mailman that just that. happens to be there. That's true. Mm -hmm. hmm. So I don't know. Maybe somebody's trying to deliver Wanda. Maybe somebody's trying to deliver Wanda a message from the outside. Uh, oh, know, possibly, and so Agnes keeps getting in the way. You know what? That could be. So, we fl go back to Vision and Darcy trying to get away. They're now being blocked by a group of school children, and since we're going back to Vision and we're coming getting close to the end of the episode, maybe it's time to bring our guest on, the Vision himself. What do y'all think? Oh, boy, okay. let's do it. <laughs> All right, let's do this. So, Vision and Darcy, they're trying to escape in their truck. So I think it's time to go from 50s Vision Dad. Let's see if I can make this happen. Oh, boy. There we Whoa. Go. Yeah, oh, I think Vision. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, I think your head is a little screwed on wrong, but whatever. <laughs> We've always thought that. Well, that's right. true. Uh, it's glad to be oh, it's good boy. to be here with you guys tonight thanks for having me on mm -hmm. so currently I'm trying to get away in Darcy's truck and sure enough all these dang school children keep getting in the way I keep having these interviews and finally I just get tired of it say Darcy I'll meet you there time to float up through the truck fly out here just like the Smitty said I should this is yeah. a new filter this, this filter exists now <laughs> the vision filter. <laughs> I mean, talk about a show being popular. What can I say? I'll tell you this, that I like this this filter a lot better than I do the other hosts sometimes. But yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Right. Oh, you realize how much Tim moves when you try to watch this happen and it's just Vision's head keeps falling off of his body. <laughs> yeah, I know. For real. I guess Thanos came in and just ripped his head off, and now it's on a spring or something. <laughs> I'm not sure. He did the rip way, the stone out of his head. I think that this particular scene of the show had a first for the Vision. I think this is the first What's... time the Vision ever cursed. Well, I didn't hear oh. that. I guess I wasn't I paying attention. I didn't either. I think or... he said... I don't even know why I'm doing this damn interview. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. He did he did say something that effect because my son picked up on that. He said a curse word. Yeah, so he gets oh. he rips his microphone off and takes off. Yeah. Yeah, he I mean he got angry. I, I'm about <laughs> ready to say the same thing. But why not? <laughs> well, we're almost there. We got Topic 18 coming up out of 20 topics. So we're back to Agnes's house now. Wanda's in there. By the way, it's looking more and more like a super creepy mansion. She sits down in front of the table where Tommy and Billy have been eating their lunches. They're not there anymore, by the way. And there is a, a interesting kids TV show. What's that called? Yo Gabba Gabba? I never watched that. Yeah, yeah it's Yo either. Gabba Gabba. So Yo Gabba Gabba uh, think... is now MCU canon. What do you it's think? Now it's now what? I now was going to say, Riley Riley watched some of it when he was little. I hated that show. but Yeah, well, now, oh, Senior Scratchy is there in the cage. I got an interesting theory about him, by the way. We may not get into that. But I wanted to ask Agnes about the twins. Where are they? And, of course, this takes us back to the milk carton with the missing children. A little bit of, you know, the foreshadowing was there. Now the kids are missing. 
And Agnes says, and I thought this was important, they're probably just down in the basement playing. So didn't y'all get the feeling that Agnes clearly wanted Wanda to head to the basement? Oh, yeah, definitely. She wanted yeah. to go down there. So that raises a lot of questions in and of itself. And, of course, this that's when it hits the fan, when Wanda starts heading down the basement stairs. So Wanda starts heading down the basement Looks down there, calls after the boys. No response. Suddenly, she's stepping through hallways covered in either big vines or big mm -hmm. tree roots. I hear CJ. She may be recalling something we wanted to circle back to, right? So the basement is creepily no. covered in these vines. Oh. Yeah. I see what you're doing here. We're back Thank to you. the swamp. Thanks. <laughs> Gotta admit, though, the basement was covered in vines or tree roots or something. And where are the boys? We don't know, but I do want a flashback. We got this vine-covered basement to the nexus of all realities, folks. That's right, in the Florida Everglades. Now, knowing what you know now, tell me that this didn't have a little bit of a swamp vibe going on. Yeah, it did, actually. Me. I mean, it, it kind of I didn't did. think it looked like a swamp. <laughs> I thought it looked like a witch's lair. Well, did you I, notice all of the vines had its purplish color to them? And everything that Agnes does has a purple effect to it. Good point, Smitty. We're going to bring that up later, too. But, CJ... Marie Laveau, you know, aren't witches stereotypically pictured in a swamp? I don't know. Bowling cauldron, <laughs> snakes. I would bugs, say more like a alligators. creepy forest. More like a creepy forest than a swamp. And I thought well, that Marie. was more like a dungeon. Marie Laveau was one of the big which is there she was in a swamp because they oh who was that jerry reed sang that song yeah he did what song witches in a swamp witches in a swamp marie laveau <laughs> no he's saying marie Le another marie man Laveau, another man witch. done gone yeah another man done gone that's the name of the song i think yeah dude sneaks into the swamp finds marie laveau the dreaded evil witch Wants her to make him into a millionaire. She says, yeah, I'll do it if you marry me. So he agrees, of course. She does a little magic and puts a million bucks at his feet. And, oh, Handsome Jack, that was his name. He says, goodbye look there, Marie Laveau. You too damn ugly for a rich man like me. And then says, another man done gone. <laughs> it didn't end well for Handsome Jack. So, no. Now that we know we're in the swamp, although CJ is going to dissent on this one. but it's Yeah, that's a two-thirds vote, which yeah, I guess is a win. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, very swamp-like. Definitely Agnes's lair of sorts down there. Lots of vines growing everywhere. I want to circle back to, do you remember who we said in the comics is the protector of the nexus of all realities? Man thing. Yes, no. man. Yes, man thing. Now bear with me here. This is what got so much hate on Reddit just before we came on air. So in the comics, man thing is the protector of the nexus of all realities. Man thing is literally a man plant beast. Okay, covered in vines. So he's part man, part plant. Are y'all with me? Yep. Now, there's been another character in this show who has always stood out to me as not being a just an, an ordinarily trapped citizen. That character is Herb. Okay. Right. He seems to have some sort of knowledge. Yes. So we agree. Yeah. Herb is definitely has some sort of knowledge. He definitely also has some sort of pact or something going on with Agnes. Now, this was yep. the 
revelation that I had shortly before coming on air. It's Herb, if we're talking about a man, right? Right. But what is it if we're talking about a plant? <laughs> herbology. It's herb. Yeah. It's yeah, a, herbology. <laughs> This word has double meanings. It's herb if it's a man. It's herb if it's a plant. Get it? A very clever clever thing Marvel has done to us here. Man. What are you what is it that you're trying to say? I'm trying to say that herb. Herb is, is man, man beast. Thing. Man beast, right? Man, man thing. thing. Yeah. Herb is yeah. man thing. Man thing is part okay. man, part plant covered in vines do you guys ever think you're just reading too much into all of this uh maybe but you know <laughs> it's fun to think about so. well, here's what i know i know i'm right that her so, is a man and herb is a plant and something's going on <laughs> with both of them okay you are right he, about one of those things so <laughs> let me ask you was, so i'm going to circle back to the scene where Herb and Agnes come across a vision and Herb's like ready to ready to let vision in on all of the secrets. So you would believe that they are wanting to protect him in a way from Wanda, which why would they do that if they were also the big bad or part of the bad people? Like, why would they care about vision? That's a good point. I have a theory about that. To make it short, I don't. Do think you they care to share it? <laughs> the bad guys. Let's let's circle back to it, okay? Can you help me remember that thought, CJ? Yeah. Yeah. So, next up, she gets to the inner sanctorum or whatever. And by the way, she passes this really creepy looking book. Now, what did y'all think about the book? I saw it was a book I of magic. <laughs> I thought it was a book of magic. <laughs> That's what Marty. Nothing. <laughs> well, That's I don't know enough about her character to have any thoughts on what that book is. Like, I'm not even going to lie and pretend like I had a guess as to what that book might be. I don't know. Well, well I, I just assume you... it was the book of magic because most witches have a spell book. Right, and I don't know what the book was, but the book clearly was important. At this point, Agnes comes in and gives us something that's not quite so shocking because most people have been on this theory since the beginning. You didn't think you were the only magical girl in town, did you? The name's Agatha Harkness. Lovely to finally meet you, dear. Her eyes glow and Wanda, get, Wanda gets mind whammied or what have you by... Agatha Harkness. Interesting language there, by the way, from Agatha. Lovely to finally meet you. What did y'all make of that? I don't know, because didn't she help to drain the Scarlet Witch? But she said, finally, nice to meet you here, I thought. No, she said, lovely to finally meet you, dear. Are you sure she said dear? I thought she said ear. Nope, she said lovely to finally meet you, dear. And no. Smitty, to me, it sounds like you're saying ear. No, <laughs> here, like H E R E. <laughs> Just my country <laughs> accent. By the way, Smitty told me before we went on the air, he noticed a little something extra to eat the fly or the locust on the curtain. Yes, and that could go back to there is a Marvel character based on a locust that was a villain, but there's also the Red Locust who is a hero, so we'll have to see how that plays out. Yeah. Or it could be a swarm of locusts. That's true. There was another supervillain called the Swarm. I don't think it's any of those, but I do think it's important, and I'll circle back to what CJ brought up earlier. I think that this flyer locust, which, by the way, we may or may not find out exactly what its meaning is during this show, not the episode, but during the entire series.
but I do think it's an indication that they Agatha is not the big bad. That Herb and Agatha are actually not even bad guys necessarily. In fact, at all, despite Agatha's award-winning musical number. Let's see if I can get that to play. We'll take a listen. not get that to play super correctly but that's okay so agatha does this great little musical number which by the way has a monsters theme and i don't know about y'all but i love the monsters yeah that was fun that was a super fun part of the show and not to mention back i mean i also caught you remember the other day i told you in the last episode when she was bent over refrigerator her pants on the back so I think her we pants lost said CJ. What? Her pants said naughty on the back of them. You know how they print <laughs> stuff on the back of people's bridge. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Does she have or as we say around also? here, it had it on the back of our britches. <laughs> we say britches. <laughs> so, I do want to point out a couple things about the monsters circling back to what CJ asked me. Do we? Do I think Urban and Agatha are bad guys? You know what? If you remember the monsters, it starred this very unusual family, right? Who everybody right. else, when they first saw them, their first impression would be these are bad people. They're monsters, right? They're vampires, werewolves. They're bad people. But you know what? The monsters really were not bad people. They were actually quite good people, quite nice. They just weren't like everybody else. That was my takeaway of why did they go with the monsters here. That's true. One other thing. I don't know, though. About the I think you're reading too much into that. Oh, come on. I thought that was pretty insightful now. <laughs> uh, I don't know. She pretty much admits she's the one that's been causing all the mischief, so... Maybe, you know. maybe. But, you know, one other thing about the monsters, do y'all remember who Herb, speaking of Herb, Herb, Man-Thing, Plant-Man again, do y'all remember who Herb was for Halloween? Frankenstein's no. monster. Frankenstein. And guess who one of the main characters in the monsters was? Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Coincidence? Yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. But I doubt it. So yeah, the A the Agatha musical basically was saying it's Agatha all alone. The question is, do we believe that? I don't know. There's a lot of CJ plot twist in this thing. No, I don't know that I believe it. I um, do we know there's going to be more than one season? We do not know that. Yeah, I just feel like Let's there's a whole so. lot of unanswered questions for two more episodes. I've got about two minutes. <laughs> well, one interesting thing about the thing is that, and by the way, to me, nothing in the musical really overtly said she's a bad person except for the killing the dog. Right. If it was a real dog... By the way, we got to ask ourselves this, and we also have to ask ourselves, okay, what if killing the dog was for the greater good? In other words, would you kill a dog to save the human race? Oh, my gosh. Man, I don't know. <laughs> we don't have time for that. Yeah, we don't have time I mean, for that. <laughs> well, finally, and CJ actually called it before we went on air, a mid credit scene, which is so brilliant because it's a nod to the fact that, hey, we're out of these comedies and we're now officially into the Marvel Cinematic Universe era of television and movies. And here's our good old friend Pietro again, Quicksilver, mm -hmm. her brother from another universe, saying, Snooper's gonna snoop to Monica, who, by the way, opened up the basement door to Agnes's house and noticed all the creepy swamp vines growing mm -hmm. everywhere. <laughs> And Snooper's going to snoop. 
Don't know what that means. What I don't, do y'all think? I don't know, but I had to play. listen to that like 15 times to get that. My wife finally told me what it said. I don't know why I had a hard time hearing that. Snoopers yeah, I had a hard time Snoop. hearing it too. I had to watch it again as well. But yeah, I mean, it just makes me think of people saying play is going to play. I think it just might mean that Rambo's intruding, being intrusive on this whole situation because she is uninvited in this situation, or at least she was invited, then uninvited. I mean, cast out. Now she's back again. So, yeah, maybe she'll find that Pietro out more. Pietro was uninvited too; that he didn't necessarily right. want to come into Westview. Yeah, maybe he's referring to himself also. Maybe he's a snooper. Could be. Right. Well, this, calling her a snooper, saying snooper's going to snoop, tells me that he knows something about her from before. Now I'm going to lose my mind. I've got Taylor Swift on a loop in my head right now. I'm going to have to beat my head on the wall to get that out. <laughs> Shake it off, Sadie. Play is going to play. Shake it off. Shake it off. Snooper's so. going to snoop, snoop, snoop. Snoop, snoop. Let's let's revisit okay. something Smitty said earlier. Smitty said, "Okay, Agatha's magic is purple, and that that was a good pickup by Smitty, whose mic is rubbing all over stuff again. I'm not, I can't see your picture. It's kind of frozen, Smitty, but maybe you could readjust your mic for us. But Smitty, I'm noticed, good. I'm just sitting still now. Okay, Smitty, notice that Agatha's magic is purple." A good catch, Smitty. I'm going to take you on a deep cut here. Do you remember what Scarlet Witch's magic has been all along this whole time? Yes, yeah, red. Or red, reddish. Right, reddish. So I want to challenge y'all to look back over from episode one. Every time we see flowers in front of Wanda's house, they're all a shade of red or pink. Follow along with me here. Sure enough, when Wa when Monica sneaks up on the house on Agatha's house, all her flowers are purple. Dottie, when we visited Dottie's house earlier in the season, all her flowers were yellow. You might conclude this is significant too. And sure enough, it just so happens, and I forgot to mention this too, that one of man things <laughs> Buddies and protecting the nexus of all realities is a yellow magic wielding blonde named Jennifer Kale. Maybe I mentioned her, but she's one of Man Thing's buddies. Some people have theorized it could be a sign of Arcana Jones, another popular comics character, aka Moonglow, who uses yellow magic. I think the takeaway here is there's a distinct possibility that Dottie is also. A witch, if you want to call her that, a magic user who is associated with the color yellow in some way. Again, it just so happens Man Thing's good buddy is named Jennifer Kale, blonde hair, magic user. What do you possible? Think about Maybe that they got cut? a whole coven. Maybe they have a whole coven of witches in this particular show, and we just not really realize it. Uh. I, I just can't that, believe how much time people invest into thinking about these things. <laughs> well, guess who else, Man Thing and Jennifer Kale and the Wizard had as a buddy protecting the nexus of all realities, and I really hope he makes an appearance and he actually already exists in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That is Howard the Duck. Howard oh, the that Duck? Would be good. That would be awesome. Howard the Duck. If Howard CJ, the Duck were to come. I encourage you to check out <laughs> classic Howard the Duck movie sometime. <laughs> but yes, sure. Howard the in all Duck my free time. Does exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we're dealing with the nexus of all realities here. They all but just said that they are. In the comics, we do have a group of people dedicated to protecting this, the integrity of this nexus. I think that Scarlet Witch, Wanda, 
has had a mental break here and given her powers, she has now threatened the nexus of all realities itself, which, by the way, is kind of a big deal. And so all of these folks who have either been sworn or pledged to protect the nexus, or maybe they were brought in for extra help, Agatha Harkness being one of them, Dottie being another, or herb, herb, plant man thing, possibly being one. I think Rambo. That they, right, Rambo. I think that they have helped Wanda construct this mythical reality to keep her mind stable and to protect the nexus of all realities by doing that. Do I think Mephisto is hiding in the background somewhere still? Yes, I do. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, <laughs> we knew that was coming. <laughs> I'm not giving up on it. Hey, we saw the locust fly. One popular symbol of Satan himself is a fly or a locust. So I think that was definitely a sign of Mephisto's involvement. It's possible. And now also, I... uh, who knows? The book might have something to do with it, too. Oh, absolutely. Now, do I think Mephisto and Agatha are working together? No, I don't really think that. But I think Mephisto is somehow using this wanda situation maybe wanda made a deal with the devil himself to bring vision back to give her children to give her this reality and these witches and such are coming in through agatha's basement which is connected to the nexus of all realities and they're helping out to preserve wanda's fractured mind right to protect the nexus but I want y'all to think about something. It seems to me, <laughs> Holy smokes, you've know, put a right? lot of thought into this. It seems to me that <laughs> Agnes is not quite of her full Agatha Harkness mind when she's outside of the basement. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know. I think you're that, like that. But I think she probably has been. But she's just been covering it up. Well, listening to that thought process was like listening to my mom rationalize anything. Like, how are there 17 layers to that one thought? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. It's like an onion sandwich there. I mean, I'm not sure that there's time for all of that. I mean, we're talking witches' layers and people coming in from other universes and different universes and devils and people being controlled and not controlled and who's controlling who. <laughs> Yikes. Well, and I want you to keep something in mind and I don't think you're wrong, CJ, but we do have a, a little movie coming out at some point in the near future called Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. The nexus of all realities is, of course, in integrally connected to the multiverse in the comics and so i think it's quite possible that we're going to see some of these things play out in uh, in the movies and in other shows that are coming out well i mean marvel no, everybody has, has to watch everything job. that's brilliant well yeah marvel has done a great job of connecting a ton of things together and they are super good about uh self-promotion so it's possible yeah, and I even heard a theory about the book. So before COVID, and I hate to bring up COVID, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which is another Disney Plus show soon to be released, a matter of fact, soon after WandaVision ends, was supposed to come out before WandaVision. Now, some people mm -hmm. theorize that Falcon and the Winter Soldier discover this magical book in their series and it somehow ends up with Agatha Harkness or with Doctor Strange or with There's Wanda. so much speculating going on out there. It's insane. 
I'll it tell really you this, is. COVID's probably going to be about 10 years past when the mounts gets through theorizing about all this stuff. <laughs> COVID. I mean, I my mind is blown COVID. right now. I almost feel fortunate that I know nothing about Marvel Comics or anything from the past that I can just watch the show and be like, oh, that was clever, and then go to bed and not spend a week just with the possibilities. Well, did I mention that Senor Scratchy might oh, be boy. Howard the Duck? Did I mention that? <laughs> <laughs> no. I think I'm going to bed after that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want to encourage CJ to watch Howard the Duck. If the mm -hmm. blockbuster near you is still open, you could find it there. <laughs> Smitty, did you ever see Howard the Duck? Oh, yeah. It's been a long time, but I've saw it. Well, do you remember how they brought him I into can't... the Marvel Cinematic Universe in a recent Marvel movie? Uh, no. So, I remember how they brought Spider-Ham in. Well, but... well, he's not in the Marvel Cinematic Universe either because that was a cartoon from another company. But no, Howard the Duck showed up in one of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Oh, that's right. I remember that. My daughter got her picture taken with one of the guys from there at Tupelo Con. There you go. So, CJ, coincidence or not, Howard the Duck showing up in a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. What are they guarding? <laughs> the galaxy. And and interacting with other realities. And all of a sudden, we got the nexus of all realities here. You tell me. Nothing's a coincidence. Nothing is a coincidence. That's right. And you know what I and really want to do? I really want to care slowly go back over these episodes because something that Agatha of Agnes said. Of course you do. <laughs> no, but hear me out. Not with y'all. I just mean on my own. Because something Agnes said really keeps sticking out in my head. At one point she says, the devil's in the details. And just like where I picked up on Freddie Jason and this really creepy devil looking guy staring at the camera i really think that we have a lot of clues about what's really going on hidden in the background and the details of all these different episodes it's quite impressive it's how you can spend five hours watching a 26 minute show and then a whole week thinking about it <laughs> well i mean it's either that or gray papers so you know <laughs> Keep in mind, I literally now, as a college professor, for the first time ever, had a wellness check submitted on me this semester. So it is quite possible that I am also at risk of fracturing the nexus of my realities. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, oh, thanks, Smitty. We lost gone. Smitty. Think he was yeah, he was like, I gave you guys a two-minute notice ten minutes ago, so peace out. Yeah, he was on his BlackBerry, so I'm sure that it had a little battery <laughs> life left there. So, CJ, yeah. anything else to add before we get out of here? I don't think so. That was a whole lot to uh, digest. Yeah. So, and the two now longest five episodes days are thinking. still left. The two longest episodes? Well, some people theorize it's going to be the two longest episodes. Oh, boy. So many theories. You're not going to want to hear this, but apparently somebody gave an interview quite a while back and divulged that the total run time of WandaVision is six hours, and if you add up the run times of these first seven episodes, you will see there's still a good three hours to go. Oh, wow. Okay. Over the last two episodes. So buckle up, yeah. CJ. Well, all right. There you kinda go. Hoping, we better carve out some time. I know. I'm kind of hoping they just make the next episode super short too, and turn that final episode into a like a Lord of the Rings esque oh. mega length. No, no, <laughs> no. 
They cannot do that. I watched the Lord of the Rings once. And it's what three plus hours long, and at the end, absolutely nothing happens. Nothing happens. You watch three and a half hours of a movie, and they end up on a mountaintop, and nothing is solved. Nothing has happened. So, if at the end of all of this, we know nothing, I will not be okay. So, I have to admit, selfishly, that when Lord of the Rings is on TV, it's like one of those movies I always stop on. And watch a little bit. Oh, With that being said, forget it's it. No, virtually impossible that's torture to watch old TNT. It's always coming on TNT, but you know, without commercials, it's like four hours long. With commercials, one of them is like eight hours long. It's like the whole day. Yeah, yeah, it's impossible. TNT just runs it all day long. Yeah, no, that movie. I have never been so frustrated in my life. Well, I'll get my ten minutes. Like I'm, fix, I'm getting know. like worked up thinking about it right now. Watch Frodo do something stupid or cry or, you know, whatever. And then I'll, uh, you know, he cries and whines a lot. Do you ever notice that, Frodo? Oh, I only watched it once and I will never watch it again. So couldn't tell you. He was actually my least favorite part of Lord of the Rings. I actually think they based Frodo on Caillou. <laughs> Caillou's the worst. Yeah. He really is the worst. And he's been canceled. Uh, See ya. Oh, well, there you go. See you, Caillou. Don't be a baby, you know? Life lessons, well, don't be a baby. If you're listening to this podcast, instead of watching the Facebook Live, I hope you hit that subscribe button. If you're watching on YouTube, do yeah. the same thing, please. Check out allthings-unexplained.com. Do me a favor, check out squatching.com. There's some mysterious things over there. We saw some mysterious things over at... Under the hexadome.com, too. Smitty just messaged yeah. us and said, Are y'all still broadcasting? <laughs> he could dial back in. Oh, Smitty. Let me move our logo. Can you? There, there's a better place for it. Oh, I kind of liked it right on top of my face, like devil horns. Not going to argue with that. Mm. There you go. <laughs> Too bad my video is delayed and I just look like a weirdo. I know. We got to figure out a way around that. But CJ, I'll let you take us out and introduce later. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Until next time, keep loving the unexplained. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. This has been All Things Unexplained.